Hey, what's up? It's Connor. Welcome to the last video of 2025 and welcome to the channel if you're new here. What a year it's been. I'm excited to wrap things up and already looking ahead to next year because I've kind of got some ideas cooking already but uh you're here for some mac apps so let's just dive into it let's kick things off with an app called cleanup buddy and the concept here is so simple it's an app that just temporarily disables your mac's keyboard and trackpad so you can finally clean your laptop properly i just hit start cleanup everything locks instantly and i can go to town with the microfiber cloth while my mac keeps running in the background the best part is i can actually keep my music playing and uh, when I'm done, I just simply hold both the command keys for a couple of seconds and everything just wakes back up. Now, moving to the menu bar for a moment, I wanted to share with you a couple of small apps that offer a ton of practical value. First up is Zone Bar, a simple but incredibly useful app that adds multiple world clocks directly to your menu bar. It's fully customizable and super easy to access, which is perfect for recording or collaborating with people in different time zones. If you want the absolute quickest way to airdrop anything from your Mac, just add a free app called Menu Drop to your menu bar. Once it's up there you can drag anything so files full folders photos even safari links and it'll instantly trigger airdrop you can even airdrop whatever is on your clipboard and it's completely free and in the app store to keep my menu bar clean i also use a small free utility called hidden bar and think of it as like a lightweight alternative to bartender it lets me tuck away anything i don't need all the time so everything to the left of the arrow gets hidden until i hover over and tap it and then on the right i keep only the essentials so like file sharing tools quick access utilities and anything i just use often next up i actually have an iPhone app and it's called PU Prime and they are the sponsor of this video. I'm now 26 and feeling a bit uh, old and I just recently started investing in I'll be honest, I was pretty intimidated at first. The app itself is clean, beginner friendly and super easy to navigate. You get instant deposits and withdrawals, seamless copy trading and a clear look at global markets all without feeling overwhelmed. PU Prime makes it simple and fast, especially if you don't have hours to monitor the markets. With just a few clicks, you can copy expert traders and follow their moves in real time. I started with just $50 and you can copy traders for as low as $25. And I can't lie, no shame. Uh, what really kind of persuaded me to use PU Prime is that they are partnered with the Argentina Football Association, aka uh, Messi, and that's uh, pretty awesome. Now, I also want to say I'm not a financial advisor, and if uh, you can't tell, I'm really not the best with my money. So always make sure to do your own research. But if you are interested, hit the first link in the description and huge thanks to PU Prime for sponsoring this video. So Launchpad was killed with the latest version of macOS, and we now have like a spotlight style app library, but it isn't very customizable like Launchpad once was. Enter Launch OS. This app brings back the classic Launchpad we all remember, but rebuilt and refined. I can organize my apps, customize the layout, and finally make it feel like a real launcher instead of just a random grid. It goes further than the original ever did. I I can scroll through all my apps, adjust the grid size to fit more icons, tweak spacing, and tailor the entire layout to match my workflow. I can trigger it by nudging my mouse into the top left hot corner, and it appears instantly on a clean, dedicated screen. And I can even customize the blur effect and background to match my default wallpaper. And for the price of a coffee or maybe a coffee and a donut, if I go for the multi-device license, it's worth it if you miss Launchpad. Now, the next app I found is called Pioneer, and it completely surprised me. I thought it was going to be one of those like gimmicky apps that you try once and forget, but it's the complete opposite. Instead of cluttering your screen with launchers or quick actions, Pioneer brings them right to your cursor only when you need them. With a custom keyboard shortcut, the Pi pops up, and here's the clever part. The Pi does exactly what you want it to do, so you can use it as an app switcher, showing only the apps that you have open, or a uh, customizable launcher for any apps, files, or folders, but it gets even smarter than that, as Pioneer can adapt to the app that you're in. So, for example, if you're in Finder, I can enter the trash or share a file via AirDrop directly from my cursor. Pioneer is a one-time purchase of $15 in the App Store. It's pricey but at least it isn't a subscription. So $15 one time doesn't sound too bad. If you're like me, distractions on your screen are everywhere. And that is where Monocle comes in. A simple but clever way to stay in the zone with just a click in the menu bar, it gently blurs everything in the background of the window that you're working in. The beauty of Monocle is that you don't have to minimize your apps or mess with Stage Manager as everything stays open, but nothing actually distracts you. You can even customize it by excluding certain apps and adjusting the blur strength, add a satisfying grain, or use a gradient blur to softly fade your surrounding windows. And it is $9 on the developer's website, but for what it does, I do think it's kind of worth it. Next up is Doctor, a tool that fills a gap I didn't know was missing. And if you ever felt like the Mac OS dock and app switcher were kind of lacking, Doctor brings real life previews to the dock icons and revamps the alt tab switcher that you may be used to on Windows. Here's what I love though. Hovering over a dot icon shows all the windows for that app without switching focus. When you hit option tab, you get a full Windows style switcher with previews, 
aero navigation, and all the usual actions like close or minimize. And the customization is pretty impressive here. Layout, spacing, filters, full keyboard control, and it's all maintained by a sole developer. And if you find it useful, definitely give them a little support. We all know about hot corners, but they are kind of limited. So enter CCC corners, which takes hot corners to a whole new level. You can assign any app to launch when you're flicking your cursor into the corner, plus set a second trigger to close the app at the same time. Even better is that it works with Apple shortcuts. So basically turn a corner into anything, start a focus mode, toggle your lights, open a note, you name it. And just like in Mac OS, to avoid accidental triggers, you can set up modifier keys so that the corner only activates when you're holding a certain key. The app collects no data, requires no accessibility permissions, which is pretty nice and costs a one-time $3 in the app store. Our next app substage brings AI into the finder in a smart, practical way. So instead of sloppy glue ChatGPT onto everything approach, Substage lets you perform terminal commands using just plain English. For example, if you want to delete all the JPEGs in a folder, just type delete all JPEGs and Substage generates the terminal command and then runs it locally. So your commands never leave your Mac. You can also convert videos to MP4, Word docs to EPUB or get a word count for a file. Now this app is unfortunately subscription based at $3.99 a month, but you can unlock lifetime access for $30 if you own your own OpenAI account. Now for the creatives, the entire Affinity Photo Suite, so photo designer and publisher has now been unified into a single app called Affinity and it's now completely free. It blends the best of Photoshop, Illustrator, and Publisher into one clean environment. You can do your quick touch-ups, create posters, build layouts, or dive into advanced projects without switching apps. It sports full non-destructive editing so you can experiment freely. You can even customize your workspace, keeping only the tools you care about most. And as a long-time Affinity user, I've set up mine to mimic the old versions and it just works beautifully. Finally, a little bonus that is small, but a mighty app and that is Folder Preview. And you know how when you're hitting the spacebar in Finder, it gives you like a quick look for your files? Well, folders don't get the same treatment. So Folder Preview kind of just fixes that. It's tiny, you set it up once and forget about it. Suddenly you can preview the contents of folders and even zip files directly from Finder or Spotlight Search. It's a one-time $2 purchase on the App Store. All right, that's gonna wrap it up for my Mac app recommendations for 2025. I'll definitely be making more of these videos in the future because I'm always on the hunt for new apps that either improve my workflow or just make Mac OS better overall. I've also been meaning to ask you guys, uh, I'm kind of at a crossroads right now between balancing YouTube and social media like Instagram and TikTok. And trying to figure out like where I should put my time and energy. So let me know, would you rather see more long form YouTube content or would you rather see more short form content? Just drop a comment below or shoot me a message over on Instagram. Oh, and one last thing. I'm also curious if you're interested in more casual like vlog style videos, less scripted, less crazy B-roll, just more stripped back and chill alongside like the usual content. And if I do focus more on YouTube, I should be able to post more YouTube videos without like pressuring myself to make every video feel like super polished. So. Let me know if you guys would be interested in like, I guess just chill vlog style tech content in the comments below. All right, I'm gonna stop rambling here. Uh, if you guys like this video, make sure you give it a like and share it to a friend. And if you like Apple tech or desk set related content, make sure to subscribe and I will catch you guys in the next year. Ah, a little dad joke, uh, but I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.